my usual Sunday broadcast. Uh, no, well, okay, there, there's probably a plan for today, but not for the beginning here. At the beginning, I'm just going to hang out, chat a bit, and do some laddering with some decks that I like. Um, after a bit, then I'll get to the second half and talk about the uh, most recent Melee tournament and uh, how I had a fun hand in it. But uh, I'll come to that later, just because I might have a friend that wants to join on the stream. Uh, if, if he does, then basically I'm just going to give him a little bit of time. So in the meantime, uh, since I believe I am alone here at the moment anyways, I'll pick something out to play with. I haven't played Abyssian for a bit, so let's do that. Let's play this deck, because it's a lot of fun. Something everybody's seen before, I've done it on stream and hasn't changed really recently, but it's just my uh, bottomless abyss from my master thread featuring ramp, healing, control, uh, chakram abuse with its in-game of Reaper Vorpal Revenant, which get out faster thanks to Jackfire. Fairly straightforward, but effective. The only part that isn't straightforward is uh, Chakram, the fact that Chakram gives Frenzy makes those three exceptional because flying and Frenzy is really cool, Celerity and Frenzy is really cool, or the Dying Wish Six Ravenlings is really cool, and then uh, the deck's most frequent finisher is Frenzy on Revenant allows him to multi-proc his effect to do Crazy Burst. Gotta find it here. Looks like caps looks on, not that, that really matters. Alright, and queued up. I just haven't had as much time to play lately as I'd like, but eh, that's okay. I've been spending more time just chatting with people about ideas lately than actually implementing and playing them. But I've got quite a few things I'm working on, just none that I'm quite ready to show off. Um, I'm either going to do, well, you know, next thread's coming soon, but I don't know if it's going to be a part two of Anar or Lionar. So I'll go back to not finality Magmar. Ah, CD, this should be a good map. Better early for Rev, although it's good in this matchup. Um, I need an opening play, and I'd rather it not be Inkling. Uh, I believe he's running sort of a... Oh no, this is CD. I'm pretty sure he's running his OTK uh, Arcanus Spellspark deck. So that means I've got a while, and I, there aren't going to be real... Well, okay, Owlbear will be an important removal target. Um healing isn't going to be... I'll replace the Desolator because it's a little early for that. Well, yeah. Okay, good. I really want to be finding uh, you know, Dark Fire and Draw Power. Let's see, I don't think his version does a lot of swarming. I mean, it sort of does usual Arcanist stuff. But at the same time, it's not very good at breaking artifacts, so I think I'll... Hang on to this. I could double inkling to open, but I think I'm going to just do the mystic and tr try to save the inklings to combo with my BBS. Uh, but if I don't draw a good turn two play, then I'll just do those next turn. Okay, yep, yeah, this is definitely is it because. What he does is he uh, plays Bloodbound Mentor and then saves up a bunch of the of his BBSs 
and then he, once he's at, like, seven mana, he'll play uh, his... The, the Arcanist that spawns Spell Sparks. He'll play that, he'll play two BBSs, and then a couple zero-cost spells, and just dish out, uh, you know, 20 damage or more with some Spell Sparks. So that means I need to kill that. Very quickly, it's a very high priority removal target, like more so than Owl Beast in this deck, ironically. And I have, um, I have a Muriel Shroud for Owl, so I'm going to play these. This one in his face to limit his mobility, and then I'm going to banish that just so that he doesn't get any chance for BBS, and really hard to deny that globe. Again, it's a bit early for these revenants, especially since CD has the ability to just sort of murder me around the same time I could be using revenant. Okay, so let's see what we draw. I'm going to put this on. I'm most likely going to draw a card, BBS, and kill the Thunderhorn, but we'll see what I draw. More chakras. Okay, so yeah, let's get rid of that Thunderhorn now and just have a bit of a field developed to use the chakra. Probably not keeping both of those. The dark fire this game, which is sad. That's okay. If I had a dark fire, I wouldn't be so quick to be replacing revenants and reavers. Circulus. All right. Corona. Good card advantage. Hoping he'll play an illusion where I can frenzy it. That would be nice. Nah, he's playing around Chakram. Not surprised. CD. CD is a good play. Oh, he's just, uh, well, just card draw, sort of, except that he burned a card, so I don't know, really don't think that was worth it. Um, okay, so I could Chakram, or I could Vorpal. Uh, there's a high chance he has Aspect. So I'll hold off on the Chakrams. Let's, let's go for the Vorpal and make sure he has to spend a turn answering it. And if he doesn't, you know, transform it or dispel it, if it gets its effect off, then Chakram's pretty devastating. Of course, if he has an Aspect Thunderhorn this turn, that would definitely suck. But he's down one Thunderhorn, so I have a pretty good chance. Hailstone, all right. Yeah, this I definitely recognize what deck he's playing here. All right, what do we got? So now I've got an illusion. And an illusion. It's just boxing me in. Interesting. Whatever works. That's a good Vorpal again. Or I could clean this up a bit, but... um. It looks like he might be trying to set up for an Owl Beast, so with that in mind, I think I'm just going to clean this up. And... Alright, so clean up. Attack here. And yeah, I'll just uh, herald, you know, just develop a bit of a field and get this herald. Next 
of that circulus, which sets me up for a decent draw from play next turn. Um, I don't think he had his aspect Thunderhorn combo, otherwise he would have probably not just uh, hailstoned. Um, let's see, he hasn't saved up any BBS, so I'm not, until he gets a, one or two of those in his hand, I'm not too worried about the combo happening. But I do need to keep my, uh, there it is, interesting, he's doing it really early. Maybe that means he has a second one. Okay, now he's just going to do a lot of spell sparks just to clean up my field. And if I, since I've used two ritual banishing, there's a good chance I can answer his fire starter, which would mean if he could just, you know, do it next turn, that would be pretty rough. Let's continue to protect his circulus. Can we replace one of these Vorpals? Uh, okay. So, yeah, I think he's mostly got a handful of illusionists, so. I'm going to start to put some distance between us. And yeah, I'll just play both of these to just again start developing here threaten that circulus a bit. Uh. Yep, there's that aspect. Does he have the Thunderhorn to follow it up with? And a circulus value for him. Uh. Okay. Yeah, fire starter is pretty good with Gar. Like even if you can't combo, it's still just really solid. It's been ages since I've run it, but it, it was like the very first Kara deck I made was a Firestarter Albi's Polarity deck. The very first Arcanus card. Deck. And that was after, you know, before, shortly before that, she had her old BBS where she could just buff minions in her hand. So that was a bit different. Oh, yep, there's that. If I can't answer that, I will be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so what? I can I can either answer the fire starter or that. There's a fairly good chance he has a second fire starter. Since I've killed an owl already, but I haven't killed a fire starter. Uh, hmm. uh, I know I know I'm going to play Vorpal Reaver and whip either this fire starter or this mentor onto here to kill them. But I'm not sure which I actually want to kill here. Uh, the mentor the mentor will get a lot of value off of you know yeah mentor mentor will get too much value off of that circulus so I need to kill that now. Vorpal and oh, no, once one of my things sticks here. Trinity, all right, refilled. 
Nice, no, just gonna value town me. Oh, oh, he had another hailstone too. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Card advantage crushed here. And he's just managed to keep my field clear. He's never given me an opportunity to even try and chakra him. I can do much at this point. I have to. Well, chocolate's not going to do anything, unfortunately. Hmm. All right. So I have to be able to deal with. Trinity and this fire starter, or I'm dead. So I can. Okay, well, Vorpal's not going to get me out of this. Okay. So I could BBS to get enough, to hopefully get enough reach to dispel the Trinity Wing so it can't get in my face. And then I can come over here, clear that. Okay, well, I just gotta do it. Oh, I did not get the spawn where I needed it. Um, well, in that case, I will just have to. No, oh, wait, no, I guess I'm dead. I needed to try, I needed to run that way. Ah, uh, rope killed me. <laughs> yeah, just the lessons. Oh, that was... Um, I was a little overzealous about killing the Thunderhorn when, since I knew he was playing that Firestarter deck, I really probably should have saved it for that and just, you know, I'm not a Swarm deck, the Thunderhorn wouldn't actually be that bad for me. But, eh, live and learn. Abyssian. Versus lots of top notch players today. Uh, the poor rating. It's tanked so much with all the weird testing stuff I've been doing, and you know, bad luck and me playing when I'm tired and making really stupid mistakes. Uh, but that's okay. I'm in it for fun right now more than ladder. Like, it's just top 10 is possible, but it's a lot of work. I'd rather just sort of hang out in the top 50. Then get loves. I don't quite understand what you mean, Black Waltz, but thanks for stopping by. All right. Um, I do need an opening play, but Shroud is not a good opening play. Uh, don't like replacing that. Alright, looks like I'm just going to open with an inkling. Yeah, well, I definitely don't need two of them. Okay, yep, opening with an inkling. Yeah. <sighs> 
player one versus Magmar. Eight man is a bit of a stretch unless I can find a dark fire. But if I find a dark fire, I'd go for the turn two Vorpal. So in case he's running finality and or is being ultra aggressive, the eight man is not practical right now. So it looks like I will just go up and I can either deny the globe or protect my wraith. Um, I'm going to protect my wraith just because. Of course, if I denied the globe, then he would have likely gone down to take this one and left the wraith, wraith alone anyways, so maybe that was the wrong play, but... But that's okay. Yep, I made the wrong play. I should have denied his globe, but that's okay. I don't need two of these, that's for sure. I could whip it, but not that high of priority right now. I think I will trade face, healing mystic, BBS, and just sort of keep this globe. And we'll see where these spawn. Okay, focus, okay, so I'm taking the globe. Um, it's probably not going to mechanter this turn. Desolator's a waste because it'll get burned. No, I think I'm just going to end up whipping the Lava Lasher, just because just I don't have much better to do with my hand right now. And I have a pretty good Chakram turn coming up if he's unable to clear all, most of this. Um, I should have been playing a little bit more around Pupa Bomb, but I, I did a pretty decent job there. Like, you can't hit all of these things with Pupa Bomb right now. Hopefully he'll give me something to frenzy here. Okay, he's focusing on clearing rather than <clears throat> I don't know if he's intentionally playing around the chalk arm or is just really trying to prevent me from getting a field here. Interesting, he's not even blocking that egg off. Huh. Alright, well I still don't need two of these. Um, it's not really a worthwhile chakram turn, unfortunately. And now I need to be concerned about McCanter. Well, I know I'm going to come down and clear this egg. That's going to happen. And I think I'll just pull the Wraithling down a bit there. Alright, well, let's clear this egg, because we know that's going to happen. And then play the Reaper. Well, I could play it back here, but then I'll get attacked by the Lasher. Well, there's nowhere. There is nowhere that is. Oh, wait. Um, well, my Wraithling's going to die no matter where I put it, so let's... Do it this way so we're at least playing around Frenzy. I could just trade with the Wraithling too, since I know it's just going to die to the Lava Lasher. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That way he just doesn't have a good McCanter turn. Yeah. 
He may just be trying to do a combo with the raptor instead of, uh, you know, he's got more in current hand or something, but we'll see. Maybe he's going to egg morph the reaper. We'll see. I wouldn't mind that too much. I mean, every time you force Ragnarok to use an egg morph as removal, it's really good because, uh, like, egg morphs, egg morphs read like 10 damage when you're facing Ragnarok a lot of the time. That's that's going a long way to keep my health safe here, which is always a concern versus Ragnarok. All right, so now he's down. An egg morph. And because it's Ragnarok, I really just don't want to risk going face. Because very easily, it's his 7 mana turn, so he could Morin Kerr, BBS, and Greater Fortitude. Hey, service, thanks for stopping by. Meaning, like, the 7 mana play could easily do, let's see, 5, 10. Yeah, 7 mana play could do 20 damage. So I really want to preserve my health here. Just in case. Well, technically, I would survive the worst case scenario here. But, well, 5, 10, 15. Oh, wait, no. Oh, holy crap. Um, worst case scenario, he has 25 damage, actually. 10, 15. Okay, but if it's anything less than, you know, I just really need to preserve my health here. There, there is a worst case scenario where I do just lose next turn, which would be a little insane. But considering he's already used an egg more, well, we'll see. Hopefully I'm not just exactly lethal at full health here. That would really suck, but it is possible. Okay, there's the mechanter. Okay, well, thank God I'm not just getting lethal and full here. That would really suck. But he's popped the Vorpal, which means I have a very good Chakram turn coming up. And then if he's unable to break the Chakram, then I can follow it up with the Revenant that can just end the game. Oh yeah, I, I I was running Ragnar OTK for a while. I didn't like it as much as my uh, you know more mid rangey versions. For the most part, I ended up just not running something wave, but it is a lot of fun doing like OTK Ragnar. All right, so he hasn't given me a good chakram opportunity. But what I'd like to do still is set up for a Chakram Revenant. So I'm going to replace the Reaper at this point. Okay, um, I can shroud that. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll keep my health safe. I'll keep my artifacts safe. This will keep my artifact very safe. It will set me up for crazy spectral revenant stuff next turn. Because now he's going to be pretty hard pressed to break that, even if he has a ripper combo. I'm doing well enough, service. Thanks for asking. Well, I think after this game, now that I have an audience, I'll. I'll pull up my my latest tournament experiment here. Ooh, he's he's setting me up for a, a massive revenant turn. If he can't break my artifact this turn, he is going to be in a world of hurt here. Yeah, I think in fact I just have. If he doesn't break yet, I think I just got game. 
actually. Let's see. 8, 12. Oh, yeah. God, I've got 16 damage revenant here. Ah, uh, beautiful. Wham. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Is Magmar a good class to play? Oh. If, if you'd have been here about two weeks ago, Magmar was unbelievably ridiculous. I, I was loving it. I was having a good time playing both as and against Magmar. But about two weeks ago, Magmar was like the tier one deck by a landslide. And even now, they are still top tier. They are still tied for the best of the, you know... Still tied with the best decks, at the very least, here. Oh, yeah, this whole deck is built all around the, the fancy frenzy stuff. Have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I set myself up to where it'd be next to impossible for him to break my artifact there. Alright, well... Now that that's over, but yeah, uh, here service. C come take a gander at my master thread. There's there's several good Magmar examples there. But yeah, Magmar's gotten some very very powerful things recently. They took some very heavy nerfs like a week ago because they had to basically emergency nerf them. They were so powerful. Like the new expansion dropped, they were so powerful. Like two weeks in, they emergency nerfed them, and it's been about two weeks since then. And they're still tied for top, and it's it's game's great. Magmar's in a great spot right now. You've got lots of options with them, too. But, yes. So, let's talk about uh, this Saturday's Melee Tournament. Some very, very fun... Very fun stuff happened this tournament. Uh, my my buddy, my buddy Zate ended up winning this melee tournament with a, with a lot of help from obviously not during the tournament itself, but like I I did a lot of work with him on his deck the day before and came up with a really really crazy strategy. And I planned to use it myself, but I didn't really. But I'll, I'll get to that in a minute here. Um, oh, well, I, I mean, Drogon Vath's still absolutely a thing. Uh, my favorite faction is Abyss, for sure. Uh, I, Magmar is my second most played, but not... But honestly, like, uh, Abyss is my favorite, for sure. And then Magmar is my second most played, but I really like Magmar just as much as I like Vitruvian and Vanar. Uh... I dislike Songhai, and Lionar is alright. They just, you know, they're my fifth least played, and they're okay. Um, alright, so, yes, let, let, let's get to talking about what happened during this melee and the bit of fun chaos and entropy that I had a hand in, a heavy hand in. I'll just talk about my deck first, and then I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other things that happened during the tournament. So, the Duelist Melee uh, is a tournament where you bring one general and one deck, but you get a 10 card sideboard. Alright? Oops, sorry. Uh, so, this was my one deck that I brought. Wait. Isn't that two decks? No, 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 no. That that's just one deck. But that's that is basically the secret to what I tried to do this tournament. Is I effectively brought two decks. The first deck uh, wins with a massive surprise factor because it runs uh, yeah, fissure, glacial fissure here which is a very, very powerful card that isn't run very often because it's very hard to set up. And uh, if your opponent knows it's coming, 
it's you know it's basically never going to work twice so but because it's not played very often people don't play around it very much so what i did is this was my deck that i'd start the games in the tournament with um, so i would super surprise them with some glacial fissure combos so glacial fissure combos so you can mesmerize the opponent's general onto the center tile to get that eight damage glacial fissure oh for those that don't know what glacial fissure does um glacial fissure does eight damage to anything in this very center row so what you do is you try to get your opponent baited towards the center row and then if they go onto the center row you either just fissure them on the spot or you lock them down with gravity well and frigid corona until you can fissure them and then mesmerize can teleport the opposing general one spot often right onto the center to combo with glacial fissure and the nice thing about Bay is you can just sit on your side of the board and at some point uh, they're going to be forced to engage you because otherwise you will just slow burn them to death with phase BBS. And the slow burn tactic has gotten much, much more viable thanks to cryptographer, cryptog cryptographer and Bloodbound Mentor. Uh, Bloodbound Mentor is a new card. Every time you cast your BBS, you put a BBS in your hand. So, yeah, between those two, you can just very quickly start to burn people down with phase BBS. So you can just hang out on your side and eventually they'll be forced to either come into the middle or cross the middle and then get mesmerized trapped. Um, but it's never going to work game two. So, but before I talk about the rest and then the rest of the deck, so we've got uh, some mag or Vanar Saples, uh, Aspect Shemzar, of course, Hearth Sister Faye, of course, um, but then we get to the other meat and bones of the deck. So Luminous Charge, uh, for my friend who hasn't played in five months, Luminous Charge summons five zero one one walls. When those walls die, they deal two damage to all enemies around them. So what you do is you trap people in with a Luminous Charge, and then you play Scorn, which does one damage to everything on the field, which will blow up all those walls in their face. Or you can play Enfeeble, which turns everything on the field into 1-1s, one meaning the wall, uh, the, those 0-1 walls turn into 1-1s one and can now attack and blow themselves up. So that, that's a 15 damage combo right there. And so it's pretty easy to either just trap them into that so they can't get away, or if you're a really late game for some reason, you can just... Uh, Luminous Scorn at the same turn for a nine mana play, but usually you just you trap them with Luminous, and if they don't manage to get out, which you can usually prevent either just by having them trapped or stunned or provoked, then you can follow it up with either Enfeeble or Scorn. And then just all three of these cards are very powerful just on their own, even not as part of the combo, but when you put them together, they do some pretty crazy things. So game one, I have this Fissure game plan. But then game two, uh, what I did was immediately I would rematch my opponent. And that's when people are usually side decking. So now they think I haven't side decked, so they proceed to play around Fisher. Because what I did was I just had this deck also ready to go in my client. So I would just immediately queue back up with the non Fisher variant, which just completely turns into a different deck. It goes from this aggro very aggro fissure deck into this slow ramp uh you know grandmaster winter's wake wall deck so just the complete opposite strategy and it just happens to be that the, the package difference between them is exactly 10 cards which is the sideboard size you're allowed to have so so they sit there trying very hard to avoid the middle and playing slow and suboptimally, and you then, surprise, you don't even have Fissure in your deck anymore, and bam, you start getting wrecked with massive late-game combos. And so now they're wondering, wait, did he just have all of that in one deck? And then, you know, again, immediately just match up again, and so they think you have it sideboard. So now they're thinking you're playing basically both of these decks, and, and then... So if you didn't just straight up win, you know, if you lost one of those for some reason, just game three, there's so much psychological damage, they don't know what to do. Like, every decision they make is the wrong one, and it's just so beautiful. Um, and especially with, you know, 
even if you don't win with the Fissure deck in the first game, now they're just they're just terrified of Fissure for games two and three when you're not running it. So, and you know, so they they work together to make each other way stronger. And but even even if they weren't doing that, they're still very powerful decks in their own right. They're built on you know a very powerful chassis that you know d two decks that all play separately on on the S rank ladder and they both do well. Uh, this one needs the surprise factor. So this one works really well unless you run into the same person twice. So now uh, since he still doesn't seem to be online, he's probably asleep. Um, my friend Zate, who won the last melee, uh, played a similar concept. Basically, uh, I ran into him on the ladder, and he was playing a, a fissure deck. You know, look anything like this. It was a little unoptimized, but you know, he 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 was doing really well with it because he's a very good player and is very good at uh, mind gaming and baiting people. So he ended up beating me with a fissure deck because I you know I wasn't playing around fissure. Nobody plays fissure, so he beat me with a fissure deck. And then so like later that night I ran into him again and he was no longer playing the fissure deck but I thought he was and so I sat there playing super hard around fissure and I'm thinking I'm being all clever and then he was just playing a different deck so we got to chatting after that I'm like wow I just got mind game so hard you know what I bet we can apply that to uh, the the duelist melee that's coming up in a day or two here or we can do a side deck because I, I've had this idea for a while about you know making a transformative decks rather than building a sideboard to counter people. And especially with Banar, you're you know you've already got all the counters you need in your main deck. Like you've got Aspect, uh, Chromantic Cold, uh, Enfeeble. Like you're already prepared for any matchup in particular. So uh, we sat down and you know he he showed me his Fisher deck which which was solid, but it, it was mostly just sort of an aggro deck. And I, I'm like, hey, look, uh, if you're going to play Luminous, there's some really powerful combos you can play with Luminous. So I encouraged him to go the uh, Enfeeble, uh, or the Enfeeble Scorn route, and uh, just helped him retool the deck to improve it. Um, his, his Fissure version looks very similar to mine. Very similar to mine. I think he... He runs Spelljammer because he really likes to dump his hand, where I, I can be a little bit more conservative. Um, so different play styles. Neither are wrong. Uh, when you're playing an aggressive deck, you can either be con conserve your resources and try to kill your opponent quickly, or you can just you know build a little bit more card advantage in and not worry about it too much. Um, I, I wondered that, but... Um, I, I don't think it would fly. I'm pretty sure you, you're locked into your general, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, but his, 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 his late game version, he, he took a little bit of a different date. You know, he still went the, um, he still sided out his fissure package into his late game in Bala Winter's Wake. But instead of going like all out combo, you know, he skipped the gravity well for EMPs and a couple other mid-range cards. And then, so, you know, I, I helped him a lot with his deck and I, I, you know, gave him the really cool idea and helped him put it together. But, you know, ultimately he was the original inspiration and he, he did take his own take of the deck. And the best part is neither of us thought we were going to make it to the, the tournament. So neither of us even knew we were going to be playing that day. So we didn't communicate ever since uh, I, I put this together. And so he then went and made his own small variation of it. And then we both showed up to the tournament. However, um, so I went in being all smug and secretive about my cool little I'm bringing two decks to this tournament plan. And oh, sorry, you guys can't see the second deck, can you? Um, let me see if I can fix that a little bit. Is that better? I think that's better. Hold on. Yeah, that's better. All right. Um, so uh, we communicated also. We both rack up the tournament um 
Uh, my deck performs very well, but just uh, I was playing at work, so I ended up having to leave in my third match, and I just had to forfeit it to my opponent and say, hey, you get a free win, I have to head out. But at that point, I'd already done some psychological damage in the tournament, and now everyone was just very nervous about what was going on here. And so here's where it gets even more hilarious and chaotic, is my buddy Zate, who ended up winning the tournament, was basically doing the same thing, but he did the exact opposite of me. We didn't even plan this, he just happened to do it. He, um... Uh... He decided to run his his late game deck first and then do his fissure plan in the side deck now personally i i like it the other way around because the fissure will make the fissure not for sure is going to win because there's a reason why it's not played very often because it's it's hard to play pull off even when you build around it so i played it first to make my other two matches stronger he did the opposite of played his late game deck first to make people really comfortable hanging out in the middle and not worry about it. And then in the following games, he turned into this deck and then just get a surprise victory out of this picture. Both are valid tactics. I mean, obviously I prefer mine and he prefers his, um, but what it made it so great is the fact that we were doing the opposite thing. Just anybody that matched up against us in that tournament didn't know what to do and he ended up winning just because we basically did this metagame psychological warfare on the tournament and it was really funny and i'm glad he won because uh, while i couldn't see the tournament through i was at least there in spirit for the end of it so it was a really good time um i i could go ahead and pull the decks out and play them on ladder but because they are strong enough to just ladder with. And if people want to see that, I'll do it. But, you know, they, they work better as a, as a team and in a, as a tournament deck. Unfortunately, now that uh, it's already happened once, it won't be as strong the second time around. Because the, its its greatest strength was the surprise and confusion factor. And now that that, that is over now people will know what to expect a little bit more so it won't be quite as strong you you could next level it and start flip-flopping the tactics and whatnot but for the most part it was just a one shot okay i'll, I'll pull the fissure deck out because as long as i don't get matched up against like the same person twice in a queue then Hey, Vibe Wolf, thanks for stopping by. Uh, um, as long as I don't get matched up against the same person twice in a queue, then I can, you know, get my nice surprise fissure win. <clears throat> but no, the, the tournament was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a good time, and it's, it's, it's a pretty silly deck. And even though it's not a surprise now, you know, if somebody other than me tried to take this to the tournament, it would probably work again. But it it is pretty hard to it is pretty hard to play. Uh, I mean, that's true. But um, usually the decks, without getting a fissure off, this version has a tough time. Um... Oh right, that's that's precisely what I did in the tournament, King Coke. King Coco, um, is I side the fissure out for game two and three. Uh, here, here, uh, you, you just if you get one fissure off, you typically win. And the deck's very good at getting one fissure off unless you get ranked mashed up against the same person twice in one day. Um, so, but all right. So I haven't played him today, and I haven't played this deck for a couple things. So hopefully nobody's expecting fissure. Alright, I don't need the blistering score in this early. I never replaced that. Um, I don't need the chromantic cold this early. Gravity wells are good. Uh, coronas are good. Um, I think I'm going to keep all of that because I don't have a fissure, but if I can get them to the middle or next to the middle, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the hearth sister. 
and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to do a, a little bit of a strange wall formation. Um, so what this wall formation does is it lets me contest both globes uh, and it's not so ob you know, if I just played it along the center row there, then he'd start thinking fissure. But now I've played it in a way that looks like I'm just trying to contest all of the globes and lock him up when he moves. So this gives me a turn one play, and if I'm lucky, uh, well, it, it contests all of the globes, which it does. Um, and if I'm lucky, he's not expecting fissure, so he'll move up and you know, clear the first one. And then if I'm very lucky, he'll move up a second time in the middle, and then I can keep him there until I start fissuring. Or if at the very least he moves one space up on that. Alright, I don't want to... Let's see, so I can... Cryptographer... Well... Mm -hmm. I'll save the cryptographer for now. Let's go ahead and stun this. Replace the other one of those. Okay, good. So that's the other reason I sort of saved it. Is now I can combo those together shortly. Um, so now, now I have a choice. I can move into the center to make him really think I'm not playing Fisher, or I can leave that spot open to, and hope he goes into it. So I think I'm going to I'm gonna go up and yeah, all right. I'm gonna go down here and contest this globe here. So I'm technically still contesting both globes. I'm really lucky he'll move into the center, clear that globe, so I'm not contesting it. And then next turn, I can either uh, Bloodbound Mentor BBS, or I can very likely pull off a Luminous Charge. Thunderhorn! Probably Frigid Corona the Thunderhorn. Alright, well, it's too early for this. Okay, well, I've got this combo lined up very soon. Yeah, let's... Let's go on to that, see if we can find ourselves a fissure. Still no fissure, unfortunately. I have to play that just because, so I think I will... Uh, come up here, that way he can't dodge the middle. I'm just gonna chromantic cold this, which may seem like a waste, but clearing this and baiting him into the middle is important. Even though I don't actually have a spiral right now, it's pretty, pretty likely I can find it. And now that the Thunderhorn's locked down, I can do a Luminous Charge combo, and Thunderhorn loses a lot of uh, practicality there. Oh, he's in the middle. Now, if, now I just need to... Well, if I can find a Fissure, I'll be in good shape. Okay, I don't need two of these. That is unfortunately not a Fissure. But... I think what I've got to do here is just make a very defensive luminous charge. Alright, so let's take this globe just so he can't have it. Um, and now I'm not wasting this. Now, uh, he, he could move everything out of the way and, and Thunderhorn, which 
would work. I am going to get aggressive. Now, the lack of fissures is killing me. He even went into the center. But I just haven't been able to find one this game. <laughs> Alright, uh, there you are. You are late, sir. You are very late. Interesting. Oh, he stayed in the center! That poor... Ba oh. Ooh! Let's see. Wait, am I, am I dead? Did I just lose? No, because that's gonna... Oh, snap! Well, that was pretty beautiful on his part. <laughs> that was... That was something else. Whoa! <laughs> wow. Well, I gotta give him to him. That was that was a fun way to lose. That was pretty great. <laughs> I got I got punished. Weird. That was great. All right. Well, do you want me to try again, or shall I move on to something else? Well, how about I how about I play it some. Um, it's part of your deck. Banar versus Vitruvian. Wait. All right, so too early for wake. Uh, that's good to have. Too early, yeah, too early for either. That's always good to have. Wait, did we just go against each other, Vibe Wolf? No. Who was I against? Who was I just playing? I don't remember. I'll look in a minute. Uh, let's see. I don't really need the Gravity Whale right now. Alright, let's just turn one frigid Corona. Oh, well, damn it, man. You knew exactly what I was doing. That deck needs its surprise. If it doesn't get its surprise factor, it loses. No wonder it lost. I was, like, somewhat sniped. You have to know exactly. <laughs> That's okay. I still got to give it to you. That was an epic way you killed me. That was so beautiful. That was amazing. That was amazing, man. Alright, still don't need this Enfeeble. Um, looks like I'll just play a Mentor and contest Globes. Well, I guess I should have stayed by the Mentor there because uh, Lost in the Desert is a thing now. Uh, so I just, just screwed up a lot, but uh, that's okay. forgot what the new meta was. If I get lost in the desert this turn, I am going to be really sad. Because <laughs> that, that, that would very likely cost me the game. Oh, thank god. Whew. Oh, rescue Rx. Fascinating. All right, so I think I can, well, playing two of those isn't actually very practical because it's going to wipe out my hand. But what I can do is I can take both globes, three, no, it's still just going to wipe out my hand, isn't it? Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, well, let's replace... I don't want to, but I need to. Okay. Alright, so let's, let's do that plan. I could also just Luminous Charge, which is ultimately fine. Yeah, let's just do that. Oh no, that's the same problem. Eh, no, let's... I'll just, you know, save the BBS turn for next turn here. And if I'm lucky, I can uh, find a Scorn or an Enfeeble and do some cool stuff. At the very least, this will, you know, make him play awkwardly and back off. Superior Mirage on a wall. Weird. Very weird choice. I mean, I guess he can hit me for two there. Which is... I mean, I guess that worked. It did wipe things out, so... Yeah, whatever works. Is he going to forget to play around Warbird here? Oh, nope, there it goes. Okay. Oh. So now I can... Come here, clear this, run away, because I can play a long-range game much better than he can. I can simultaneously play around Lost in the Desert. Let's wipe out all of this. Place the wisp because now my mana is good. And refill my hand here. There we go. Pretty solid. And now he's retreated to the far other side of the board, and I'm on the other side of the board as Fay, which is really bad for him. Very bad for him. Alright, so I've got an easy aspect. I'm going to replace one of these warbirds because I don't need them both. In fact, and I'm very soon, next turn I can just do a Luminous Charge Blistering Scorn combo, which will be pretty devastating. So this turn, let's hit that. And then I could just do a Luminous Charge this turn. Let's see, move up. Yeah, sure. Let's just spend another one here. Now there is nowhere safe for him. And blocking this corner keeps me from... And if I use BBS this turn, I'm going to burn a card, but that's probably... Fine. So I've pretty much got everything I want. And so next turn I can either... well, I've got lots of options next turn. Please don't burn an Imbala or a Winter's Wake. Ah, uh, yeah, Scorn. Scorn, Luminous... Well, I mean, I may not have a clear Luminous Wald. We'll see what happens here. Lots of options. There's Blood of Air, which is basically his whole turn. Looks like I'm probably going for the Enfeeble turn, actually. Because that's going to be pretty brutal on him. 
Okay, I can replace one of these warbirds here. Ooh, ah, uh, this is this, this will do the trick. All right, so now I can clear this and do a bunch of damage here. Uh, yeah, not not quite, but next turn I can uh, score and Luminous, but I, uh, like, worst case scenario, he has two lost in the deserts, and I survived that just fine. So I'm just going to uh, do some more Warbird damage, and I'm going to keep those guys together, and yeah, so I, I've just got Luminous Charge, score next turn to finish him up. And keeping those guys as a package protects them from desert, which makes sure I can reach him with another charge. Not even going to need to do the Inbala Winter's Wake stuff. I, I just did the slow burn, luminous combos that is. That happens with both decks there. Going into the corner might save him. Nope. I mean, he'd have to put something here. He's dead if he doesn't block one of these spots. Because two damage from the walls and one from score. Yep, alright, there we go. The positioning is not really important right now. And there it is. That is precisely the type of things you ended up dodging by Wolf. I'm also sad because I finally had my Glacial Fissure in my hand, too, uh, when you came up against me by Wolf. So, <laughs> yeah, you, you did that epic, epic thing turn, and I got punished, which is good, because you were probably dead the next turn if I wasn't. All right, so uh, that was a good time. All right, so that is the so that that was the you know duelist melee psychological warfare devil trouble pair there. So they're fun, they're neat. So at this point, I no longer really have a dedicated plan. I've still got a good hour left that I can do this, so I'm. Taking requests or just doing some laddering with probably some of my favorite decks. I think I, I may go back to my Bottomless Abyss deck because I haven't played that as much as I want to. Or I suppose there was somebody here asking about Magmar, so I could do some Magmar stuff. Uh, is he still here? I don't think he is. Okay, no. He left. Alright, so skip the Magmar. I I really don't... Okay, I guess that's not true. So, for my upcoming Magmar series of decks, which is basically all Starhorn, because I haven't done any Starhorn for a while. Um, Alright. I was trying to save this to come out and all all in one thread, but the original meme deck I have massively overhauled. Oops. So Dance of Dreams. Uh, I call this deck... Uh, hold on, I have a good name for it. Okay, so... Meme of Electric Sheep. Because unlike the 
original versions of this deck, this one's very different. So everybody recognizes everybody recognizes what you see so far. This is the the basis of the Dance of Dreams OTK deck. But here's where it starts to get different. I, I this is less of a meme deck than it used to be. This actually has potential to be pretty powerful now and consistent. Because instead of ultra committing to the Dance of Dreams Fang OTK, we're running the Seismoid package as well with just a, a nice, healthy dose of mechs here. Technically, I can get a Mechazor, but it's not very likely. But what this does is it allows me to actually make this deck really consistent because I can now uh, double Kujata, or well, Seismoid double Kujata, and then I can pretty much play the entire deck until I hit my Twin Fang and do that. Or I can just get a guaranteed Mechazor off of it. Um, then, you know, Replicant, you know, makes the deck even more consistent. Um, so it, it can swarm hard, it can play Mechazor, it can dump out its entire deck in a turn for either Twin Fang or Mechazor, and it's become, become so much more... You're right, you can also just, you know, mill your opponent, too. Um, it's become so much more consistent now that it's got the Seismoid Replicant package in here that... It doesn't have to just bank on Twin Fang to win anymore. You can play Mechazord. You can mill. You can just play a Dance of Dreams just to get some draw power from just Swarm Approach. Like, you can just play it as a Swarm deck. You can play it as an OTK deck. You can play it as a Mech deck. It actually has the potential to be more than just a joke. However, it is miserably difficult to play. <laughs> Because it's not as committed to the Dance of Dreams OTK, so you can't just bank on that and just have that be your game plan and do it, because it doesn't always it doesn't work. The OTK doesn't work quite as often, but for sacrificing a little bit of OTK consistency, we actually have a halfway decent deck to back it up. So it's um. Right, so I call it Meme of Electric Sheep because uh, Do Androids Dream of an Electric Sheep is uh, an old classic. And now, instead of we're just dreaming here, we're, we're, we've also got androids and mechs and robots in the deck now. So I, I thought it was an appropriate, appropriate rename. I didn't save it, did I? Um, I'm going to save it. Why can't I find it? Oops. Well, uh, spelling would probably help. Uh, Mech, Twin Fang, Swarm, and Mill. It's surprisingly actually a viable Mill deck. Because Seismoid makes your opponent draw too. And you can very easily make your opponent draw 30, 30 cards in a turn here. Why, why can't I find it? Oh, uh, okay, well I can I can thin down my search here. There it is. Okay, I forgot to save its new name. Hopefully I don't horribly screw it up, because I don't play it very much. A, because it's a little weird. B, because it's miserably hard to play. But, alright, this this is about entertainment after all. But I'm only playing the one game unless I get, like, a subscription, okay? I don't want to tank my rating too much. But, you know, it, it, if somebody subscribes, then I'm pretty much at their mercy and I have to do whatever they want. Only playing one game, even if it goes terribly, unless I get bribed, basically. 
because I've been tanking my rating enough with all my various experiments lately. Alright. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. This is not a good matchup if she's playing Provoke and Stun. Alright, so got a good replace there. Okay, we don't need the Metal Tooths this early. Actually, actually, Metal Tooths are better than Blood Tear, so we'll keep one Metal Tooth. We'll replace that. Move up, replace, uh, play Replicant, call that good. Uh, in general, with this deck, you want to replace your one cost, one health units. That way, it, when you are trying to do a Twin Fang dance combo, those are the things you draw. You want to try and play your stuff that doesn't die to the Kajata. I'll replace the Prophet because it's the least useful, and Blood Tear I may end up needing, but I'll likely re end up replacing both. Alternatively, I could replace the third Replicant since it doesn't do very much. Now I'll replace the Prophet. And go from there. Although it does look like Agro Fay, which we'll we'll see how this goes here. The moment I play uh, Mechazor, though, has or any mech, it has the added benefit of people are like, oh, that's not a that's not a Dance of Dreams deck. I don't need to worry about that. So it, there's there's a lot of moving parts in this deck, way more than usual. But again, surprise factor is big. All right, so let's... Yeah, Prophet is the least useful right now. Oh, well, that, that sucks. Guess I'm not doing a Replicant this turn. So let's just globe, globe deny here. Um, I don't... I can't play a Replicant right now. That's just not... Okay, well, I can globe deny... Right. Um, here. BVS is not up next turn. Looks like I need to just conserve my hand here. Alright, so I'm going to go up, clear this Primus, and then if the Hearth Sister attacks one of the one health things, then I can finish it off with the other one. If she attacks me, then it dies, but... That, that's what I gotta do here. Seismoid, alright, that's good. So now I can Seismoid replace a replicant, play a replicant. Or I can uh, Seismoid Metal Tooth if he puts down something I want to deal with. Right, and that's another thing. Thanks to Seismoid um, and Max, you can actually just develop a big enough deal to just do a normal Twin Fang turn without of Dance of Dreams, or vice versa. You can just develop a big field and cash in it on it and dance. Ah, Crypto, that, that sucked. Well, I know I'm placing this mech. Okay, so, hmm. Okay, I think I'll hold off on the Seismoid here. And just do the rep, well, ping that off, because this is definitely looking like Aggro vet, so I do need to be a little careful with my health. So let's hit that. And then let's hit this. And then we can draw a card. Not in this deck, although I have a whole bunch of Quill Beast, Rebuke, and Blood Rage decks that I'm working on that will be coming in my next Magmar thread. Got a whole bunch of that. Um, I guess I can spoil some of it this stream, but I'm trying to save that. 
This one's already a spoiler, so I'm going to hold off on spoilers and playing uh, meme decks on the ladder unless somebody subscribes. And... So, in the meantime, let's... All right, so I've got Twin Fang. I've got Seismoid. All I'm really missing right now is good Kajata. That's an easy replace. Unsteal. Alrighty. Okay, now looks like I'm going to be doing a uh, size. So I'll probably um, seismoid, metal tooth. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, let's replace this. Still no Kujatas. Yeah, I think I'm going to just clear off this Sunsteel Defender here. So, Seismoid. Um, metal Tooth. Move up. Attack it. Block the advance of this thing so I don't get hit by it since my health is getting very concerning. Uh, as is... Uh, I also have to be a little concerned about Aspect Thunder on 6 mana here. Um, so, because he'd likely uh, Aspect the Seismoid and play the Thunder right here, so it'll move up two spaces. So, to avoid a total field wipe, I need to move this back. And now, at best he can wipe out the seismoid and my my face fortunately the lack of kujatas is killing me that that is the most important card of the deck my health is getting a bit low to try for a dream gazer turn But I can start just Seismoid spamming, which will let me put together a combo. Because um, you can do two Kajatas, uh, Dance of Dreams, and Twin Fang for seven mana. Guaranteed win. Assuming you're in melee range. So that's what I'm still trying to set up here. My health is a little too low to probably use the Dream Gazer, so it looks like mm, it's probably a spell sentinel. It looks like I'm going to play a Seismoid. Alright, let's start somewhat close, because I may want to just cash in on it. So I'll play it out of melee range. Out of his melee, so I'll, I'll, I'll kitty corner. Well, my health is no, my health is too low to put myself in range of that sentinel. So let's actually just um, play it close, but not too close. Okay, it's a free blade. That was a possibility. And what's it? Okay, let's um, let's see what we draw. I'm just trying to set up. Okay, let's block that thing's advance from me towards me. I could play another seismoid. That is an option. Uh, play it safe. And all right, so. My health is just too low for that. Alright, I'll replace the Dragon Mark. Still no Kujatas, but 
if he can't clean up his field this turn, I can just do a, you know, a twin fang naturally. Finally, Jesus. Assuming I don't die this turn, and he doesn't wipe my field, I may be able to just kill him without a proper combo, just with the swarmed field. And then I also, if I can draw a Dance of Dreams, I could just do the full combo. And so I'll probably equip one thing, replace the Dream Gazer, see if I can find an actual combo. I don't find the actual combo, then I can just go from there. But, okay, God, I now I have to do math. Alright, so, two, four. Alright, two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, I can just I can just double fang and win, I believe. I don't even need to combo properly. Alright, double fang and win. Yeah. Think. I hope I didn't just screw up my math form. Did I did screw up my math horribly? I I royally screwed up my math. Well, crap! I am bad at math. I am unfortunately very bad at math. Dang. And I'm dead. Uh, oh well. Well, I am bad at math. But, no, like, had the deck been able to find any of its combo stuff, like, could have. Well, you know, that, that, that's why this deck is much stronger than the traditional setup. It. As you just saw, like it doesn't need to combo to be able to win, and it has more ways to combo. I just unfortunately couldn't really get any of them to work, and then I screwed that turn up because I am bad at math. But <laughs> that's okay. It was still a good time. Very, very close game. If I'd uh, just held off for one more turn, I'd have probably won. Well, alright. <laughs> uh, alright, well that's enough of that. I've tanked my rating further. Let's let's play something competitive. Uh, today I'm just on a bottomless abyss kick, so I'm going to do that. Unless I am motivated to do something else. Uh, that is precisely what I was talking about, that the deck is really hard to play, because it's a lot of math. A lot of math. Magma versus a lot of math and calculating probability. And I'm decent at probability calculating, I just, I, I tend to misplace numbers a little bit if I can't write them down. And I just, I can't do it. 
in the turn timer that we've got. All right, well, I don't need either of these this early, but I might want one of them to go with the Dark Fire Sacrifice. Um, I do want to turn to play. So Desolator <clears throat> be a natural choice. Nah, it's a little early for the Revenants. Oh, snap! Black Wolf subscribed! Oh boy, I guess I'm at your mercy after this game. <laughs> you want me to play more of that? Uh, of, of my Dance of Dreams deck there? Okay, I, I will be doing that immediately after this one. Oh boy! <laughs> guess I have to spend my next 45 minutes playing that unless... Black Waltz gets tired of it. But I'll, I'll try to get through this game quick so I can get to that. Alright. Okay, so... Uh, Alright, so... Mm -hmm. I do want to do the Reaper. So I could just uh, Dark Bear Sacrifice and do a turn to Reaper, but that feels wasteful. I think I'm going to just replace this Reaper for now. Okay. And let's see. Magmar doesn't have any repositioners. I mean, I guess Recombobulus exists, but he's not doing that. So I'm going to move up one space, contest this globe, and just play the Healing Mystic up. My Lilith decks aren't meta. Lilith just isn't meta, period. But yes, yes, fair enough. We'll we'll have lots of entertainment after this game of me failing miserably at math. <laughs> All right, another Thunderhorn. Okay, well, we don't need this Herald. Probably. Hmm. Could just Inkling Surge and Banish. Or I could just spread out and not worry about the Thunderhorn. Yeah, let's just not worry about the Thunderhorn this turn. Alright, so deny direct access to that globe. Uh, play a Desolator where it can reach the other Thunderhorn. And spread apart. And then I can wait, well, I can BBS Inkling, Dark Banish next turn if need be here. Well, ideally I'd like to save, well I could also even just Dark Fire, yeah okay. The next turn, BBS Inkling, Dark Fire to follow up with Revenant the following turn. Or, if he for some reason doesn't kill that healing mystic, then I can Dark Fire it. No. Okay, just clearing the field for the most part. I'd very much like to set up my Chakram Revenant play, but that's just unfortunately not practical at the moment here. Okay, so Chakram is unfortunately not practical. Aha, but that will do. However, I am in very, very much at risk of a Blood Rage turn from, from him. Yeah, if he has Blood Rage in hand... Okay, no, I can't risk getting Blood Rage to death by that Quill Beast. Looks like I'm going to have to just go for the alternate plan there. So let's... Um, ah, crap. I should not have put myself in Ripper 8 range. But, too late now! Alright, so... 
and I should have shadow spawned over there. Well, I just made all kinds of horrible mistakes. Should have shadow spawned over there. Should have not put myself in ripper range. Alright, deny this globe. Well, I guess I can... Oh. Actually, alright. I'll do that, I guess. Well, not quite what I was planning on, and hopefully I don't die to a Ripper combo, but I'm probably about to since I <laughs> screwed up really bad. Because 4, 5, 6, 10, 14, 16. Yep. I had a game exactly. Oh, he had the Blood Rage, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, oh, that was. Well, I mean, at least it was a beautiful loss. At least it was a beautiful loss. All right. Well, I screwed that one up. That happens. I. But it looked like. I mean, what? I was at 16 health. If I just. No, I was dead no matter what, I think. Because if I just backed into the corner on BBS, I'd have been able to clear the Quill Beast. But then he would have hit me with the Thunderhorn to wipe all my stuff for 4 damage. And then he would do. Well, actually, what he'd be able to do is he'd be able to attack me with his general for 2 damage, attack me with the Ripper Egg for 3 damage, and then Ultra Buff. You know, I was dead no matter what. Sometimes your opponent just gets the right hand. Sometimes they just get the right hand. And, yep, I just got God handed to death there. But that happens. Can't win them all. <laughs> At least it was a fancy loss. All right, it's, it's totally called Dance. I need to rename this deck. <laughs> uh, but, all right, well... Blackwalt subscribed, so I guess I'm playing more of this. Oh god, hopefully I don't lose my top 50 in the next 45 minutes here. Uh, well, Dance of Dreams is my opening hand, so that's good. Alright, so can replace that, can replace that. More likely, you know, open with the wings of Mechazor, and at this point I'm just digging for a Kujata. If I find a... Uh, if I find a Kajata, then I will. I mean, it did go off last game. I just screwed it up, unfortunately. All right, profit unnecessary. All right, so wings of Mechazor, mind game the crap out of him. He's sure as heck not expecting a Twin Fang deck now. Well, he's not expecting a Twin Fang OTK. Uh, sometimes, you know, rebuke Fang is totally a thing, but... Alright, so get, get, get out of here, Planar Scout. You are not needed. Well, I guess I'm just doing the Mechazor plan this game. to Kajata. Yes, Kajata just eluded me last game. But, and, and that is precisely why I built the deck as it is, because if you can't find a Kajata, the deck can still function. Get out of here, Dragon Lark. You are like combo food and nothing else. All right, time for this. Now he's expecting Mechazor, and he's not wrong exactly. All right, so I can clear that with this. 
Unfortunately, the rest of my hand right now is pretty awful. Alright, I think we'll just um, get out of reach of this wind dervish. Blood tier to clear that. And just double contest this globe and start working on killing this obelisk. We'll call that a turn here. He will very likely advance with his general, because he is certainly not expecting uh, you know, Twin Fang. Ooh, Star's Furied! Very nice! I mean, it's a card you should always think about, but lately I've been thinking... I mean, anytime you're seeing Fireblaze, you should really be thinking about Star Spear. But I've just been tunnel visualing a bit too much. Um, I need to survive to seven mana and find the Kajata. That's, that's what it's looking like. Planes get, get out of here. I may just play the Prophet, just so I don't... Okay, Replicant will help here. Being a bastard, of course. <laughs> and then I think... Uh, no, I don't need to play the Prophet. I would have played the Prophet if I was... Well, I guess I'm still worried about... Yeah, because he could very easily desert me this turn. So I think I am going to go ahead and Prophet. I'm just going to put it... It uh, doesn't really matter. Put it here. No, I want his general to advance. I'm going to put it... Still doesn't matter, does it? Put it here. Just just cuts. All right. No, no Bone Swarm. No... No lost in the desert. Uh, I guess I should put it there just to prevent the wind dervish having a good spawn because he got both of their good spawns. Oh well. Well, I may just get aggroed down. Oh, at least I can run away and kill that. That's something. Uh, all right, place the prophet. I am like seven mana is the turn where you just win. If I get the Kajata here, I need to you know not die. Alright, so play a replicant here just to block that thing's advance. Back off. Uh, move this to further block that thing's advance. And then, I guess, play a. Um, I can't afford the damage from this dream gauge. So I'm just going to use that as a body block. Body blocking here is no good because they can trade it there. I guess the there just isn't a good body block space unfortunately. Um, Well, probably should have played a second body block. Oh, oh well. Aggroed to death. <sighs> Dang. I swear 
What if it's actually a decent deck? I mean, the Vanner game I could have won, but I was bad at math. And, you know, that one was just... No Kujatas. Like, I didn't get I didn't get Kujata and, or Sizemore. Like, the deck needs one of those to function. Well, it still can just uh, swarm the field and Fang just fine, or swarm the field and dance. And it just didn't happen, that matchup, because he was... Uh, yeah, considering Kujata or Seismoid plus the deck thinning of Replicant and <laughs> Dreamgazer and Starhorn's BPS, it's, it's statistically unlikely that I'm not finding what I need. Like, I've run the numbers with this deck. It's It's got well over an 80% chance to get what it... Well, by the 7 mana turn, it's got something like a 90 seven percent chance to to get what it needs the problem is living to the seven mana turn can be tough sometimes but no a it's very hard to pilot and b i mean i guess really rotten luck can happen but that's all right hmm all right so we know there's going to be provoke here provoke will make the twin fang plan very hard but not impossible at least we have all the good stuff right now. Like, play a Seismoid. I'm going to actually replace the Twin Fang, because I can draw into that later. What I need to do is I need to find Mechs or Dance. If I find Mechs or Dance, I'm pretty much... I pretty much win here. Okay, well, that's a Mech. And, all right, I've got... Okay, so I can pretty much draw my entire deck next turn if the Seismoid lives. <clears throat> yeah, like, no. I, and that, that's where why this deck is so consistent. It's just got so many different angles, and it's not 100% reliant on the OD deck. And it looks like Swarm Brome, so that does thankfully mean a little bit less Provoke than usual. And I will be doing some insanity this turn. Ah, crap. Ripped off. I have been robbed. I have been robbed of drawing my entire deck. All right, well... Mechazor here. Clear stuff, because if you leave anything alive versus Swarm Brome, you, you die. And just test globes and thin the deck. If I can find another Seismoid or a Dance of Dreams, I'll be in pretty good shape. But the other issue is the, the Provoke that this deck can put out can be an issue. But hopefully I can match his Swarm. At least enough to be able to clear the Provoke. be matching that swarm anymore because <laughs> uh, those those lines are gonna give me a bad time Got killed by Seismoid turn one, which is unusual for Lionar. They don't really usually have much range. Did I play? No, I've only played one Replicant, so I still got a good draw out of that. That's a little bit too much, Kujata. Alright, so I guess. I mean, really, I just have to run away. I don't have a better option at the moment. 
And he'll come to me. He sort of has to. Well, oh no, I can play a Kujata here, because I've got two backups. So, uh, Replicant 1. Draw a card. Body block a bit here. And the deck's thinned out quite a bit. Moment. I have returned. I have been given a treat by my roommate, so that was nice. But now she's mad at me because her cat's in here with me. Again. Yeah, well, guess where your cat is at. So. It's my cat with you! Oh, that little jerk! Uh, I mean, fair enough. We have, we have somehow managed to trade cats. Uh, well, no, the, the streak of bad luck continues despite its statistical unlikelihood. Uh, and yet, as, as concerned, the Azerite Lions are ruining whatever game plan I had here. <laughs> oh, boy. No, I'm pretty much, pretty much screwed here. Ah, oh, why are they so fast? Because I use the speed hack. Because as you may have noticed, while I'm a very good player, I'm a very slow player, especially when I have to do math. So if I have to wait for animations, I end up missing a lot of turns. I lose more games to miss turns than I do anything else, I think. But as for where the speed hack comes from, let me take my turn, and then I'll show you. Well, again, I just... No dance, no seismoid. Just got all the Kajatas. And, um... I mean, I think, can I even live through the turn here? Like, I can, I can replicate Metal Tooth to clean up. Let's see, alright. I take three damage here. Three, four, five, six, seven. I guess I can live through the turn. Sort of. Okay. Well, well, he's taking his turn where I've almost certainly lost at this point. Let me get you the link to where you can find the speed hack among uh, many other useful game enhancements. Like, there's a whole bunch of them. They, they named a card after the guy that makes these scripts because of how much he's improved their game for him. Let's see here. Okay, I have it. I have all the info saved. Where is it at? Okay. Uh, here you go. This is where you can find Speed Hack among and many other useful game enhancing tools. Now, if he didn't put a provoke in my face, there was a chance I could still win next turn. But he's about to put a provoke in my face, meaning I can't win next turn. Like there was a chance I could have still just uh, Kujata Kujata combo to victory. 
Uh, not a very likely one, considering um, it takes seven to do it reliably, but it, it can happen at six. But between the provoke and a continued string of incredible, statistically improbable amount of bad luck here, Um, I'm, uh, what I, I don't use a deck tracker. All I ever do is I always have, um, oh, blood tears. Okay. I guess it's not 100% over, but that is not a dance of dreams. So now it's over. If that was a dance of dreams and then I drew perfectly. But I can't do it with the BBS. Well, let's try this one more time. All right. Uh, I've never really needed a deck tracker, but um, what I always do is just in my browser, I have my current deck list pulled up so I can always look at it. I'm very good at remembering what I have played in a game. I have a pretty good memory. But yeah, I, I always I switch decks a lot. So I always just have the deck pulled up in the browser so I can look at it. And that's that's all the more I really need for a deck tracker. Now, my favorite feature of the scripts is a very simple one. It's the one where you can go into your deck screen and just click a button and it'll immediately upload your deck to Bagger. That's my favorite. I use that so much. Does he not have the deck tracker on the scripts anymore? Eh, either way. That in sandbox mode. Sandbox mode is my other favorite feature. I, st I still don't know why they don't just turn it on. Like, it's still just in the program and everything, but they just don't let people use it. For those that don't know, uh, sandbox mode is just when you can just play against yourself. You can load two decks on each side and control both sides. Yeah, auto export's really nice. It's one of my favorites. Well, speed hack number one. That I desperate like speed hack improves my win rate by like fifty percent. I know it sounds stupid, but it really does. I'm a good player, but I really struggle with the turn length. Especially on stream. I'm a notoriously terrible player on stream. Because I already usually like take most of my turn and get distracted enough when I'm not trying to entertain people. Versus man. All right. Oh, those were those were way less than ten percent. Those 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 were like, well, not way less. They were less than ten percent, and twice in a row, tiny numbers. All right. So again, replace the one ones because you need to draw into those later on. I've got good. All right, Kajata's here. Good replace. So far, this is already going better than we've seen so far. Okay, looking good. Looking very good. I, now I just basically need to live to seven, and I win. It can be tough during Ragnarok versus Ragnarok, so I may not end up going for the Brutal Candle. I may just go for a smaller one. Um, all right, I'm not going to need the... Actually, this is all pretty good. This is all very good right now. I'm just going to... Well, oh, hold on. If I... <sighs> Let me replace the metal tooth. Okay, that's not a seismoid, unfortunately. 
Okay, so my best bet, I just want a seven mana. Is there a way I can protect a globe for the seven mana turn? Because um, there's also a Ragnarok. Ragnarok runs uh, the 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 two damage or four damage card that lets you ping. So there's a pretty good chance he could kill the Kajata. If it was Vath, I'd play the Kajata and a one health minion, and it'd be safe. But here, all right. All right, well, I know I'm, I'm moving forward, and I know I'm testing this globe here. Let's just... All right, let's take that globe just so he can't have it, and then we'll just super protect this globe for ourselves. I could also theoretically just do a dance next turn. Well, no, these guys don't die very well. Because now that I've hit three of those, I, I could do a Kajatha dance, not even try for the Twin Fang, I could just do the Mechazor plan. But I think I'm better off biding my time here. Oh, hold on now. I'll be... I may be able to get both of these globes for six mana. Let's... Alright, let's start with this replace. Seismoid. Okay, now let's... Let's bide our time with the Seismoid and see where that goes. I could still Dance of Dreams. All right, well, let's start with Seismoid Metal Tooth. No, I think I am going to Dance of Dreams. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to. That's going to happen. All right. Seismoid Metal Tooth Dance of Dreams. Massive hand refill here. And I'm just taking that glove just so he can't have it. Um, and okay, my hand is full, so I need to play something. So let's go ahead and ooh, that's a good play. There we go. Ah, oh, crap. That made me draw another card. Bleh. I should have played something that didn't make me draw a card. But this is fine, because now I have a combo here. And, and that, that is precisely what the deck is made to do. It is not, you know, ultra-reliant on just that Exodia hand. So I have the full combo now. But I don't have enough mana to do it out of hand, so. But I can do a good portion of it, because I can just Kajata Fang next turn and cash in with one healthers. Now it's probably not worth it now that he's killed that. But of course I'm not in a huge rush either. There's no I, I don't need to rush, because I can clear this and blood tear whatever he puts out. But I don't need to rush myself. Not yet, anyways. Let's see, he's played a yeah, okay, one lava lance is done. One lava lance is done. I have all of it, it's just a matter of I don't have the mana for all of it. Let's. Alright, let's, let's replace the Dream Gazer. Because so all I have to do is survive for two turns and I pretty much automatically win here.
Do I play? No, I'll save that. And now I can just um, replicant spam. It takes seven mana to do it reliably. All right, play around Frenzy here. And at this point, I don't even necessarily need to combo, though, with the field I've developed. Um, you can only do it four mana if you gamble and play a Kajata beforehand. I don't like to do that, especially versus decks that I know are good at killing them. So uh, Ragnar in particular... It is very, very unlikely a Kajata would live for a turn, so instead I'd prefer to try to bide my time till the 7 mana turn where it's almost guaranteed that I win. And with this large field that I'm developing, it's pretty likely that I can survive to, to 7 mana, because that's the other benefit of playing it this way, is it creates a very swarmy deck that sort of puts your opponent in a reactive position. Um, all right, so but I do want stuff to get the Dance of Dreams combo started. Um, hmm. <clears throat> okay, so I think I will play a Replicant and Metal Tooth to clean some stuff up here, And then BBS, and that should get me prepped for next turn. All right, so uh, Replicant, Kitty Cornered. Do that, see what we find. Mm, that would work, but not ideal. Mm. It won't die. Could also just play it. Okay, so I'll just play that and the metal too. So, right, so I need to attack here and pray I don't die to a Ragnar combo because that would ultra suck. It's unlikely that he's got it though. Oh, I actually have Mechazor. Uh. Another thing the deck is weird, like, crap, I should have played it there. Oh well. Mostly the mechs are there just to distract him. I could have surrounded myself a little bit better, but... No, what I should have done, I shouldn't have tried to break his artifact, I should have just preserved my health, so that may have been a mistake. But it doesn't look like he has game, considering he's not just doing it. <laughs> yeah, I forget that the deck can actually do that pretty reliably, despite only having six build progressors. Okay, yeah, it's... Oh, okay, it should, should have an E... I've got the full combo next turn, which I don't even need so low on health here. Poor guy. Yeah, he, he just, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what's about to happen. Oh, here it comes. All right. Twid Fang. Dance of Dream. Q Jaka. We'll trade in once here. We'll play this here. We'll play this here. We'll play this here. <laughs> we'll play this here. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, sure, we'll play another Kujata. Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> All this direction! Okay, I'll replace that. Let's just go ahead. Let's just kill that egg just because just we can. 
Now the deck has a lot of different angles here. Alright, I need to make sure I don't kill myself with a rope here because I'm having fun. But I have to have fun, as much fun as possible. Okay. Uh, gotta have as much fun as possible! Gotta have as much fun as possible! Alright, I think that's as much fun as possible. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know what you said, Black Waltz. Full mech erection. Okay, so erection. I thought you said misdirection, but mech direction, mech erection. It's all applicable here. It's all applicable. Here. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Forty-two was a good number. Forty-two was a good number. Answer to everything. Uh, good, good times. Alright, well I have time for one more game. Black Waltz, what do you want it to be? You are the second subscriber I have ever gotten. What do you want me to play for this next game? I've got time for one more. What do you want to see? What I want to play. Well, what I want to play is my bottomless Lilith, because I love this deck and I love Lilith. She is my waifu. And this deck can also do some very, very silly things. Long Q time. I mean, I guess that's still at its estimate, but well, it's past at this point. Very long Q time. Do 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 do. Uh, I um, have you seen my uh, mechanical abomination deck, Black Waltz? I I took it to top ten before it got nerfed. I could, it was a very consistent top ten. I, I got to s number two on S rank with it before it got nerfed. It's on my master thread. All right, so we're up against Songhai here. Uh, healing is often very important. Demonic Lure will do very, very little. Um, banishing is good. Yeah, mechanical abomination. It's super effective. Yeah, go. Ahead. It's it's on the master thread. Thread. Go ahead and give it a gander, and I will. All right. So I know I'm not keeping the whip. I do want an opening play. Although Harold's not a good one. Could be worse. I think I'll just replace the whip and take the safe hand here. Yeah, we'll take the safe hand. A dark fire would be very nice. So I may end up replacing the desolator. Oh yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot of potential with um, the Tigris or Spell Sparks. Like, that, there are plenty... There are plenty of ways to do it, but I have found the, the Mechazor approach to definitely be the most effective. Alright, so I want my opening play. I really want to find a dark fire. I don't want to replace my desolator, but I think I have to. 
Alright. Globe contest. Very tiny, minuscule chance that he'll leave me both globes and I can just play my Vorpal. Otherwise, we'll just call that. I should have tipped the guy. I really should have, but there was so much going on. There was so much going on. Yeah. Alright. I don't need the second Desert Herald right now. Chakram, never bad. But not what I need right now. And I could just clean the Pando up and take a bunch of ping damage here. It would suck, but... Well, let's just put this down and see what we find. I really don't want to spend a banish on them. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's that's a tad frustrating because I put my tile underneath it. So now if I dispel it, I lose the tile and can't actually kill it. Hmm. But I don't really have anything better to do. I think I'm just going to. I'll spend the ritual on it. I have the shroud, so I can. Th th that that's a decent answer. All right. So let's just spend the ritual, preserve my health, because I am always a little concerned about my health versus Songhai. They are pretty notorious for out of hand burst. Although Kalios less so, but he can still do um, some inner focus or multi teleport his little dragon and. Uh, Grandmasters and those stuff, so I, I do like to be conservative with my health. Alright, what do we got? We got a Geomancer. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Alright, so this is looking like the... BBS Inkling Desolator turn, and if he doesn't clean it up, then I've got a very nice Chakram turn next turn. I uh, don't need the Reaper, the Purple is better, and uh, we'll save that for the inevitable Zendo. Right, I've got a good Chakram turn coming up, unless I get, like, Ghost Lightning. Darkfire Sacrifice, you are very late. Well, it's Baird, which is fine, because I still get Chakram out of Bears. He's running away. He's afraid of Death Watch or Chakram. Understandably so. Unfortunately, Chakram is also really bad for Song Eye because, you know, lots of ping damage, but that's okay. Still a good Chakram. Well, no, it's probably a better Vorpal Reaper turn. Um, hmm. I don't need this dark fire at this point. Hmm. No, uh, because, yeah, he's got, um, I can, well, he's got, oh, right, he can't do teleports anymore. So I think I'm just going to put the Vorpal in his face and just keep that thing away from me. All right, so run away. Vorpal in his face, protect the Vorpal's back, um, and just start. Yeah, very protected Vorpal, and he can't teleport it, so I am also pretty safe here. Alright, and so if he does kill the Vorpal, I mean, if he doesn't kill the Vorpal, he's in big trouble. And if he doesn't transform it, well, Chakram's gonna wreck his day. So, I'm still in a pretty good spot here.
Man, he is definitely concerned. I think it's pretty likely. Chakram is actually still good with... Yeah, yes, Chakram is still very good with pandas. It looks like he doesn't have a transform, because he would have... Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Horse is so good in ramp decks. Hmm. I could just play another Vorpal, or I could play my Chakram. Alright, well, this isn't going to do anything. Well, then again, that could kill that. I think I think I will kill a Key Beholder. And Chakram. Nah, I'm going to get my Chakram set up this turn. Precisely. And then I need to look for... Uh, oh, beautiful. Perfect. Alright, exactly what I wanted. Perfect. So now he's in just, like, he's just in all kinds of trouble right now. Unless he can break my artifact this turn, he's in all kinds of trouble. Let's see. I can't escape a Zendo no matter what, so I'm going to stay close. But not I'm going to stay just out of his melee range. Yeah, I've got, like, if he doesn't answer this and my artifact, he's in a lot of trouble. And I've got the... The Frenzied Revenant next turn. My favorite thing. I mean, even just a Revenant without Frenzy is fine, but Frenzied Revenant just ends games. There's the Zendo. That was expected. But that means he doesn't have an answer to that. Oh, he's just... he just lost. That is just game over for him. So that's 16 damage here. And... yeah. That, that... oh, wow. I just have 16, 24, 27 out of hand damage this turn. It's pretty good. It's not bad. That's not bad. It's only a little overkill. <laughs> I'm sad I didn't get to use the frenzy effect. Oh, I suppose I could have I could have style killed by attacking the Zendo, but uh alright. Well, that was a good time. Thanks for coming everyone. Thanks again for subscribing, Black Waltz. I had a good time. I hope everyone else did. I'll see you all next time. <laughs> oh, you think that was disgusting, King Coco? You should have seen a couple games ago when I did... Uh, I, I think I did... Let's see, 8, 16, 12. 12, 16, yeah, when I did 8, 12, 16, 20, yeah, I did 24 damage with just the Revenant. With just the Revenant. Uh, that, that was disgusting and hilarious, but thanks for coming, everyone. I gotta get going. Death Advocates, signing out. <laughs>